Hey, greetings. Praise the Lord. This is Clinton. To those of you who are in Christ Jesus, you know me as Brother Clinton. Welcome to my living room once again. This is the fourth day of the week, the third day of July, the year of our Lord, 2013, 5773. And I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I uh, had an unfortunate response from uh, someone in our servant government today who which response I'm going to share with you. I wrote to Senator Jeff Flake, who is interestingly and aptly named, unfortunately, who is the uh, representative for the state of Arizona in the United States Senate. I wrote to him a while back concerning uh, some legislation that was at hand um, due to the nature of genetically modified food products and the uh, need that we have for those who are producing those things and, and marketing them to label them accordingly so that we can know which one is which. And unfortunately, he wrote me back, and this is his reply, and I'm going to copy and paste this underneath the video so you can read it. He said, Dear Mr. Ames, thank you for contacting me about genetically modified foods. According to determinations from leading food safety authorities, including the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the National Academy of Sciences, food made with improved seed technologies is as safe as food that has not been made with such ingredients. Rather than increasing food prices through the creation of an unnecessary national food labeling law, I support free market forces such as the purchasing decisions of discerning consumers to encourage the food industry to label genetically modified foods. Thank you for taking the time to contact me. Please do not hesitate to do so again in the future. I also encourage you to visit my website, flake.senate.gov. Sincerely, Jeff Flake, United States Senator. <laughs> you know, this letter looks very comedic, and if it weren't for the grave nature of, of the subject matter of this letter, it would be pretty funny. Um, but it's not. So I didn't even have to pray about this. I wrote him back immediately. And I said, Dear Sir, you wrote me these words today, and I quoted the brunt of the body of his letter. And I said, With all due respect, I think you were sold out to criminals, and your words are just a bunch of rhetoric and nonsense. Here's why, Mr. Flake. Number one, the agencies you mentioned are branches of the District of Columbia, not the American people. They are financed and governed by banking and oil interests, not the American consumer, and their findings are false, and you know that very well. Number two, your opinion that labeling food products is unnecessary is irrelevant. You are not the judge. You are the servant messenger. You are my employee. I make the decisions. You follow them. That is your job, sir. Number three, please explain to me how requiring GM foods to be labeled as such altering the existing labels to include the words genetically modified food product will increase food costs. Number four, exactly how are discerning consumers supposed to encourage the food industry to label genetically modified foods other than to let our representatives in government know about it so you can legislate it? Should we tell our local grocery store managers? Call the police? Call the companies themselves? Really, Mr. Flake? From your response to my email, I now know that you are the same as all the other sold-out crooks in the legislature, Mr. Flake. As your name is, so are you. You care nothing for the people whom you represent. You think that the elite that you work for will protect you in the day when they throw the gauntlet down. They will not, Mr. Flake. When they are done using you to accomplish their agenda, they will throw you straight under the bus with the rest of society. You are a pawn. You can continue to serve your crime bosses working to disarm America and poison the people and face God Almighty having done so, and you won't be able to write him a check. Or you can get a backbone and tell your criminal friends that you're going to serve the people of this republic and they can take a flying leap. But I doubt you will do that. That would require integrity and a conscience. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. Your letter to me today was an insult to my intelligence. Please do not write me again if you only intend to lie to me like you do to everyone else. Most sincerely, Clinton Ames. 
I wanted to share that letter with you because tomorrow is a day that Americans celebrate in their ignorance called Independence Day. Independence Day is all about a time when the founding fathers of this country declared independence from the government of Britain and from the king thereof and declared that they had come here to establish a free republic and that they would be throwing off the chains of bondage from a tyrannical form of government that was taxing them to no end and causing them to to have to ask permission for everything that they wanted to do and was oppressing them to the point where they finally just broke away and they said we're going to go over to this land over here and we declare that you are not our government anymore we're going to form our own government a government of the people by the people and for the people because we understand and we recognize these things to be self-evident that all men are created equal and every man has the right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and so they came here and they declared independence from the crown of Britain and today people celebrate Independence Day by shooting off fireworks and most people have no idea why well the reason is because when the founding fathers of this country declared independence from Britain Britain said oh I don't think so and they sent soldiers over here with weapons and there was a war and uh, it's not that I encourage warfare but there was a war and because the people that came to settle here and declared independence from Britain refused to be overcome by that war then the people of this country began to celebrate Independence Day with fireworks in remembrance of the bombs and the explosions that went off during that battle when the crown of Britain was routed out and sent back to Britain and the people of the Republic of America of the several United States of America settled here in freedom. They didn't have to pay taxes to the crown anymore. They didn't have to uh, pay taxes for the land they were living on. They didn't have to have anybody's permission to build a house on their property. Uh, they could find a piece of property. They could stake a claim to it. They could own it outright. They could build a house on it if they wanted to. They could not build a house on it if they wanted to. They could open up a business, uh, provide a service or a product and not have to pay the government for the privilege of doing so. Um, they could travel freely from here to there without having uh, agent, uh, government agents stopping them, questioning them, uh, issuing citations to them, shaking them down, touching their bodies, taking x-rays of them naked. Um, they could do all those things. They could travel freely. They could engage in commerce freely. They could own property freely. They could speak freely. and. Uh, if people were breaking the law, then those people were apprehended and punished as lawbreakers. But unfortunately, in the 19th century, the Crown of Britain regained ownership of this country, established the District of Columbia, Washington, and established a new constitution, not for the United States of America, but a constitution of the United States of America, which United States of America is not the United States of America. It is a corporation called the United States of America. And so the several states called the state of, uh, state of Arizona, the state of California, the state of Missouri, these are all franchises of that one corporation called the District of Columbia, the United States of America. And the crown owns it all. And people in this country tomorrow are going to be shooting off fireworks uh, and they have no idea why and they think that they are independent and America is not independent anymore it hasn't been for over a hundred years 150 years America is a corporation that is wholly owned by the crown of England and you can do your research and find out if you want to the courts work for the, the crown the states work for the crown the United States government works for the crown Washington DC it works for the crown it's owned by the crown the US military works for the crown every form every branch every tentacle of the United States government is fully owned and operated by the crown of England so this country is not independent anymore and because of that I got letters like I got today from this uh, state representative 
he works for the corporation called the District of Columbia, which is financed by oil and banking interests, and he uh, is employed by the, the state of Arizona, which is a franchise corporation of that, that larger corporation, the United States of America, and he, doesn't, he couldn't care less what I think or what I want or what you think or what you want. He doesn't work for us. He works for a corporation. Uh, he is part of the board of directors of that corporation. That's what democracy is all about. See, this country is not a democracy. This country is a republic. And democracy, having taken over this country, has stripped you of your freedom and your right and your independence. Um, a republic is when you have rights. And when someone comes to your house, they have to have your permission to enter in. A democracy is where a board of directors somewhere hundreds of miles away from you can decide that they can enter your house whenever they want to. They can take a vote on it. And if their vote is, is a majority vote, then they've just decided that your house doesn't belong to you anymore, that your land doesn't belong to you anymore, and that you don't have the right to travel freely anymore. And that if you want to get on an airplane, then you have to be shaken down like a criminal or have uh, pictures taken of you naked or be x-rayed to an unhealthy degree, or that you have to pay this tax and that tax. They decide all that stuff. You have nothing to do with it. That's what democracy is all about. Democracy is the ruin of this nation. Democracy is all about tyranny and slavery. So tomorrow, um, on the day that is called Independence Day, remember that you don't have independence anymore. You can't own land. The land that you live on is not yours. Uh, if it were yours, you wouldn't have to pay taxes to anybody to live on it. And uh, if you don't pay your taxes to live on it, then the person you're supposed to pay the taxes to will come and take it from you, which makes manifest that it's not yours. The car that you drive is not yours. It's registered to the state you live in. It belongs to a corporation, and you're allowed to drive it as long as you abide by their rules. Uh, the public streets are not yours because you have given consent for agents of the government to patrol them and to... Uh, to enforce their statutes upon them. Um, nothing that you have is yours. The property that you live on, you can't build a house on it if you want. You have to have someone's permission. Uh, if you want to travel somewhere, you have to have someone's permission. If you want to open a business, you have to have someone's permission, and you have to pay them handsomely for that permission. You are not independent. So why do you celebrate Independence Day? Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the only hope for a lost and darkened world. This country is, is being turned quickly into a fascist state to be assimilated into a, glo a global government. Um, and that is not a conspiracy theory, it's a fact, and it's mirrored by all history. And uh, if you think it's a conspiracy theory and you don't see it, it's only because you refuse to see it, because it's right in front of you. And uh, I'm not going to go on and on and on about it, because I'm not a political activist, and I'm not one of those that goes out there and marches against the banks and, and all that, because the banks are going to do what they're going to do. The, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. And uh, there will be a global government. There will be a global government. It's just a matter of time. Uh, there has to be a global government, just like the picture on the back of your $1 Federal Reserve note. Uh, it's all about the New World Order. That's what it is. If you think the New World Order is a conspiracy, look on the back of the, the paper that you call money, on the back of the $1 bill where it says Novus Secularum Ordo, New World Order, in Latin. And it has a picture of the pyramid with the all-seeing eye on the capstone coming down to the pyramid. Uh, is that a conspiracy that the bankers at the Federal Reserve printed that right on the, their money uh, that you carry in your pocket? They are creating and building a new world order, and they are creating it for the purpose of ushering in the coming of their leader, which the Bible calls Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin. All these things were written that they were going to happen, and they are happening right before our eyes. And the fact that they're happening right before our eyes should wake you up if you have any wisdom or conscience at all to the fact that if Antichrist is coming soon and the whole world is preparing for the coming of Antichrist, then how much more should you be preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the way that the apostles of Jesus Christ preached for men to be saved. This world is perishing, and the scripture says, Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world passeth away and the lusts thereof.
pardon me, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So are you going to cleave to this perishing, dying world and become a political activist and go out and shoot people or get, get guns and stockpile food so you can survive and stand before Jesus Christ naked and ashamed and be cast into the fire? Or are you going to just keep your eyes open, watch and pray, serve the Lord Jesus Christ, enjoy the things that he's given you on this earth as, as he gives them to you, but don't love them, love his kingdom instead and enter into his kingdom and live and reign with him forever. It's your choice. You know, I love the freedom that I have here in this country. I love the fact that I can live where I want to, go where I want to. I have very limited freedom right now, but I do have some freedom. Um, I'm not a, a gun collector or a gun activist, but I can own a gun if I want to. Um, even though I have a felony from the past, that doesn't deter me. If I wanted to buy a gun, I could buy a gun. I have the right to keep and bear arms. I'm not a felon anymore. I committed a crime. I broke the law. I went to prison. I did my time. Uh, actually, I stand corrected. I didn't do my time. I used my time. But uh, the uh, I'm not a part of that corporation anymore that forbids me to have a weapon if I wanted to. I'm not a, a felon anymore. I'm not a U.S. citizen anymore. I'm an American. And so those laws uh, the, the statutes, the U.S. Code doesn't apply to me because I'm not a United States citizen. I'm an American. Uh, but I'm not into owning guns. I'm not into rebelling against them. I'm just into doing what Jesus Christ has told me to do. And that's what I'm going to do. So I hope this is a blessing to you. I hope this causes you to rethink some things. I hope this causes you to wake up and become a little bit more sober about the things that are going on in your life and all around you. And tomorrow as people are waving flags and waving banners. They're waving their, their flags with the red and white stripes and the 50 pentagrams all over the flag. Pentagrams. Pentagon. Pentagram. Do you know what a pentagram is? It's the heart of the occult. It's the shape of the uh, capital of the, of the war arm of the Vatican. It's the shape of the medals that, that the pawns get in the military when they kill people. It's the shape of the little things that are called stars on the flag, on the, on the United States flag. They're pentagrams. There's 50 of them, one for each franchise of the corporation. They're pentagrams. They're representative of Satan. They're wickedness. If you have an American flag in your house and you call yourself a Christian, recognize that that flag is a representation of Satan and his new world order and get that flag out of your house. Get anything with a pentagram on it out of your house. A pentagram is a symbol of evil. Satan knows that, and so should you. So when you see people waving their flags, and they're, and they're running around uh, waving their sparklers and shooting off fireworks in their ignorance and getting drunk, know the truth that this message has sobered you up and that you understand or have begun to understand what's really going on in this world and that America is not an independent nation anymore. America. The United States of America is owned by the crown of England. And unfortunately, it's not going to get independent again because the people of this country are not going to seek God and they're not going to successfully revolt against the crown of England. It's too late to do that already anyway because the corporation has already armed itself to the teeth to the point where even if you were to go to war against them, you would not prevail anyway. So that's why I said get close to Jesus Christ. He's the only safe place anyway. He is the ark of safety, just like in the days of Noah. Run to Jesus, and I'm here for you as a minister of the gospel of Christ, if I can be of service to you in that respect. Peace.